You know how, like, a little while ago, there was those couple of days of, like, absolutely boiling, boiling, boiling hot? Unfortunately. Oh, yes. you mean the heat wave? The he- well, mm, n- well, no. Well, it wasn't not long enough. officially, actually. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, meteorologist me is going to correct you on that. It was not a heat wave. A heat wave is three days of extreme heat. Um, according to the Met Office. But I will be getting into that a little bit later whilst Corey just fact-checks me there. According to the Met Office, it's three days of extreme heat. And we only oh, it's not that I disagree with you. It's just that for my story... I find different information. Oh, good lord. Okay, well, <laughs> oh, dear. anyway, so we often talk a lot about, on this podcast, about global warming, about climate change, and a lot of the time, especially in this country and probably in other countries, I'm not sure, I'm not in them right now, um, you get this idea of like, but it's cold now. Or if it snows, it's like, but ha ha ha, what about climate change? Up yours, Global Woke climate. moralists. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was trying That's to very, adapt it for like climate change people. It's very funny because it's like, hey, look, I, I've just, I've just given you a ah. little slap, and I'm going to slap you again tomorrow. And it's as though someone is, someone, you're like, hey, like Corey said, he's going to keep on slapping me and slapping me and slapping me and getting yeah. worse and worse and worse. And they're like. But he's not slapping, is he slapping me right you right now. now? Mm. No. But stop complaining, okay? Mm. Recently in the UK, we had these two days of extreme heat with fairly normal summer days either side. Now, you might think this meant we had a heat wave, like Corey said at the start of this story. It felt like According a heat wave. to the very specific definition by the Met Office in the UK, a heat wave is defined as three or more consecutive days of temperatures above a certain level. That level is obviously different wherever you are. A heat wave in Scotland would have a lower level than a heat wave, in, heat wave in Spain, for example. Now, this particular event in England was only two days of temperatures over 28 degrees, which is the level in London, so it's best thought of as a mini heat wave. But scientists suspect that these short bursts of hot weather are going to become more common and are increasingly already becoming more common, mm. which drags up that average temperature that we talk about in global warming. So, I want to talk about what caused this mini heat wave. So like with any weather system, it's extremely complex, but meteorologists reckon that this mini heat wave had two main causes. The first one was a high pressure system which brought clear skies to the UK. Now, guys, why do you think clear skies might mean that it is warmer? Oh, obviously. Uh, oh. obviously. Well, you sun, find it obvious, nothing. so jump, go for it. <laughs> the clouds would obviously block some of the sun rays from coming through. Corey? I was going to say, well, a clear sky is, yeah, you, it hits it hits down and there's no clouds to I stop s- it. Uh, there's no clouds to, yeah. Would is it that ref- not would it? it reflect back into space? Crucially, there, yes. It is the, 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 the clouds stop some of the sunlight reaching us, but they also, they're still white and they're still semi-translucent, like but they also reflect the light as well as blocking it. So right. that's all I wanted. That's, well, that's what I'm saying, yeah, the clouds stop. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they stop it and they also bounce it. Back Piss off space. back to space, sunlight, <laughs> uh, where it goes on for presumably millions of years. Thanks, clouds. Um, but I, so I wanted to go into this sort of uh, Luke, what? going up against clouds this month. <laughs> I was up thanking yours, clouds. clouds. You say, Thank you. <laughs> up yours, clouds. Well, on a cold day, fuck you, clouds. If you send the sun back into space, I want to be a little bit warmer. But on a hot day, thank you very much, clouds. Send the sun back into space. Send the sun back into space. <laughs> Get, back, Get back, back, back to where you came from, sun. <laughs> space. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so this first one was, a, like I said, a high pressure system um, which caused there to be clear skies. And as we've said, that causes it to be hotter. So that's part one. And I wanted to go a little bit first into w- how a high pressure system causes clear skies. Now, Jamp, do you have any possible thoughts as to how I, 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 I know that you won't, but I want you to sort of have <laughs> a guess, jump around the issue. How do you think high, a high pressure? Firstly, how do you think a high pressure system happens? Oh, I would have the, the little. Okay, idea. what do you think a high pressure system is? Um, is it? Uh, oh, I don't know. Okay, you know what? right. Lots of pressure in the sky. <laughs> okay, well, crucially, not lots of pressure in the sky. Oh. Lots of pressure down here on the on the oh. sort of ground. It could also be in the sky, but the main focus is like high pressure on the ground. So, we start with atmospheric pressure. So, atmospheric pressure is a force pushing down on the Earth caused by the weight of the air above us and the direction that weight is travelling in. Mm. Pressure is affected by temperature, which you have learned about in the noble gas equations. Anybody? Go on, Corey. Oh, temperature. Oh, God, don't make me Go do on. this. You can do it. It's volume, temperature, and pressure are all, are all related. So if you have a gas in like a sealed container yeah. and you decrease the volume of it, that's it. then the pressure is going to... In, the pressure of that gas is going to increase... 
And focus. that's it. Can you give blah, me the blah, equation? Blah. Four, hang on. One, two, three. Okay, I'll give you one point for the equation and then one point if you can define each of the pieces. Oh, okay, hold on. I'll give no, you a clue. No. That's six points in yeah, total. I'm not going to get those six points because I know the fundamentals of that, but I cannot remember the equation because I'm, I'm really bad at that. Okay, hold on. Um, as gas, as volume increases, yeah. the pressure decreases. Yeah. And so volume getting. I can't be bothered. Okay. Just, so just tell us the, the equation. The equation is PV <laughs> equals. Uh, PV equals T. No. no. Wait, P wait, hold on. P. Wait, hold on. on. You can do it. You can do it. PV. Oh, wait, K. No. What are you, P what are you doing? What are you the asking ideal, me? The ideal gas laws. PV equals NRT. Pressure right. being P yeah. being pressure, V being volume, N being the number of moles of gas, R being the ideal gas constant, and T being temperature. Yeah. Now, I do not want Corey to feel bad about that because I googled that. I don't have a clue. I, I should feel off. bad about that because I was doing it in uni. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Well, please restore your guilt. I I did film at uni, so I have nothing to feel guilty about. <laughs> anyway, so atmospheric pressure is highest when you're low. And is lowest when you're high. Can you give me, Jam, you give me an example of where you would naturally, in the real world, experience that? It's not as complicated as you think. What do you mean? Where would you experience high pressure versus where would you experience low pressure as you in your life as a human being? I did it recently. I, where would you go? Where could you go as a normal human person what, where the, the air sauna? might be thinner? Oh, thinner. Yeah. Up. Up! Exactly! <laughs> ding, 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 ding! <laughs> Correct answer! You could go up! Yes! Up a mountain? You could also go yeah. somewhere with different temperature. Yeah, anyway, true. so atmospheric pressure is higher when you're low and lower when you're high, which is why when you breathe, when you're climbing a mountain, it's harder to breathe. So, there are areas of high and low pressure all over the world, and they are one of the things that cause weather to change. When air is rising, this causes the pressure to... Jump! Come on, you're going to get one of these. Go up. No, go, go down. down. Oh, okay. Cuz the air is rising so there's less pressure cuz I mean the right. pressure will be higher up above okay. you potentially but okay. on the ground the air is rising so you've got less air cuz it's okay. moving away from you yeah. and when air is falling the pressure goes up. Yeah! <laughs> up again! You get all the ones where the answer's up. I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm going to try and find gonna, questions for you. That's going to be my one response to everything and I'm going to get them all right. What's your favorite Pixar movie? Oh, Toy Story. Up. Oh, hey, 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 hey. oh my god <laughs> there's no hope <laughs> okay so it's like basically if you imagine a load of marbles were falling on you that would be a high amount of pressure right you would that experience would, yes, a lot of pressure the, yeah, i would experience air is just loads of time i would little... feel under a lot of pressure yes, if exactly. i had many marbles falling <laughs> on me oh this is so much oh no it's a high pressure situation exactly that's why i picked it so when pressure is low and all the air is going up the air is rising and so it cools as it gets further from the earth the water vapor in the air condenses as it cools causing clouds which then can cause rain Low pressure also causes air to rush in from areas of high pressure, and that causes some of the wind. Some of the wind. Some the, of the rest of it is Luke. <laughs> well, some of it can be the rotation of the Earth. Yeah, uh, I, some of it can be caused by waves. Uh, setting up a little fart joke. Luke. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's so weird when you like uh, enter when, in the clown role in the when in you the podcast. The conversation, like, like when you're not the teacher, <laughs> it's such a strange thing to have you be the clown. I can be funny. I can make. I can make. I can make funny. Yeah. I can make funny, right? Yeah, but it's just very jarring. <laughs> <laughs> so conversely, high pressure causes calm, clear, sunny conditions. Why might this make it hotter? What do you think? Why might clown? Sorry, we've already asked that question. I don't oh, know why I know the answer. Oh, yeah? Um, it's because clouds can block some of oh, the... Like, yeah? I mean, also they, ref they usually they reflect, reflect it back, back into space. space it wow. So no clouds, clouds, you don't have that effect. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. My notes, Up I don't know how I did that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good yeah. joke. That's really funny. Um, okay, so with our mini heat, heat wave, we have one of these high-pressure systems. It's called the Azores High, and it usually hangs around near Spain, but it grew larger and pushed further north, meaning there were less clouds and so warmer weather and high temperatures. Now, this is also mixed in with the fact that we had basically a big plume of hot air being pushed up from southern France and Spain, which I don't think I need to explain to you why a big plume of hot air makes it hot. You good with that? What if you do need I'm to explain lost. it? Okay, well, do I? What if you do? Okay, a big plume of hot air would make it hot because the air's hot. Good. Oh. Good. Yeah? Yeah. We yeah. good? I'm following. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so now the final question we've got basically is what role has climate change played? So obviously, it is difficult to attribute a single day's weather to climate change. Like, as the climate deniers love to point out, there were hot days in the past. <gasps> there were hot days in the 70s. There were hot days probably hundreds of years ago. Corey's shaking his head. Yes, I know. I yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Go on, explain. explain. No, I'm not, no, no, no. You, I don't want to take this from you. Luke, you go ahead and explain. Global warming and climate change is about a trend. It's not about individual days. If you have a cold day, it can still be to do with climate change. If you have a particularly cold day, it can still be to do with climate change. Climate change will in fact make extreme weather conditions, which might actually be colder sometimes. It's just pushing up the average temperature and the average sort of sort of uh, ricochet effect, like how like how extreme the weather is. Mm, absolutely, yeah. You feel like violent, I covered right? that? So yes, there were these hot days in the 70s, but scientists agree that global warming is causing more heat waves and more extreme heat waves and it's estimated that even without the sorry, without the influence of climate change, these mini freaky hot days we had would have been up to two degrees lower. Now, that is incredible, considering that's basically the entire change of climate change. Mm -hmm. Like, it, like our, the way we're measuring it, we're like approaching, we're, we're trying to keep it within two degrees. Now, it's obviously that's two degrees average, not two degrees on a day, but this day it, on its own was two degrees hotter due to climate change. And average across the world, right? Um, I'm only looking at in the UK, oh, okay. but possibly within across the world as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. obviously, you know, just because there's you know one day that's like really hot, and there's one day in the past that's really hot, you probably want to look at the days around that as well. Like Luke's saying, it's a trend. The days around it as well. If the days around it are also hotter, then you can't write it off that back in the seventies, for a couple days, there were temperatures almost like this. If the rest of the days in the seventies were way way cooler, mm. you know, it's it, it's it's it's. It's so fr it's so frustrating that people look at it as just a a singular thing and they can't look at the bigger picture. Yeah. You know, it's the difference between being sad for a day and having depression for a few years. You yeah. know, what I mean, you can like, have happy days in depression, exactly, and you could yeah, also true. could have been sad before you were depressed. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And to answer your question, Corey, about like is this like two degrees across the world or two degrees in the UK? So the intensity of this week's heat could be in part to to do with the origin source of that warm air, right? So in Iberia. Um, average, which is where some of this hot air came from. Average temperatures have been increasing there far faster than average for the entire world, meaning there's even more in intense heat to blow towards the UK in these summer months. So in, in summary, basically, you've got these two weather system w w weather situations. You've got a plume of hot air and you've got an area of high pressure causing clear skies. And that is the main reasons for why, plus global warming, we had these two incredibly intense hot days in the summer a couple of weeks ago and that is going to become more common so anything everyone can do to try and make the world less hot would be wonderful oh, including yeah. all the big companies okay not just us i'll leave i'm i'll take it oh I'll leave. yeah take we'll make team. it less i'll take it we'll take one for yeah. the team I'll just go to Mars. Make hard, Mars a little hotter. Okay, yeah, it's all live cold there. there. Cold. Yeah, yeah, and I'll, I'll I'll heat it right up. There you yeah. go. You're basically terraforming. Mars. <laughs> That's wow. What a sacrifice. Chloroforming Mars. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said chloroforming. Chloroforming. Mars. <laughs> <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs> no. Do you know what's really interesting to me that I noticed with this heat wave that just no, not this heat wave, this mini heat wave that just went by, is that when I was growing up and when you were growing up too. They were talking about climate change making things, you know, warmer or worse. They were talking mm. about things getting like really, really hot days yeah. where like, you know, people could be dying from the heat. It was going to get horribly hot in the UK, reaching levels like, like it is abroad. You know, they were talking about colder winters. And I've, I've noticed that, right? Like I've, the, fact, the fact that over the course of my life, that, that little sample of, you know, maybe let's say, I was aware of climate change when I was like, say maybe 11 years old, 10, 11 years old. So the past 15-ish years, right? Mm. The fact that over 15 years, I personally have been able to notice a difference in the the temperature is unbelievable yeah. to me because it's like, oh, we said that it would get hotter. And now we have days where people are dying in London because it's reaching temperatures mm. that it was, that, like, are previously kind of unheard of you know what i mean and on that like growing up and and the things in the past like 
I mentioned this sort of freak summer in the 1970s that people cite that was mm-hmm. like one of the most hot summers on, on record for the UK, right? Um, there was a very funny clip, well, very sad and worrying, but also funny clip on one of those like dreadful right-wing commentator channels we have in the UK that's just sprung up recently, mm-hmm. um, where basically they were, they were going, oh, they had this climate scientist on who's trying to explain how bad this is going to be, and the anchors are kind of like making fun of it's him. not taking it seriously. And not taking it seriously, mm-hmm. and quoting this 1970s moment as like but that year as i think the the scientist goes on to explain or at least that i saw commentary on this later on that year had masses of excess deaths due to the fact that it was too hot and people died yeah people people don't want to look at that though it's just insane to me that they're like we had this because there's also statistics like that's one of the happiest years um on record because people were having a nice time in the sun and stuff yeah but it's also like loads of excess deaths yeah i feel like people don't really understand it's, it's difficult to understand how sort of mini heat waves and heat waves and that kind of excess temperature work because, you know, obviously it feels like, oh, we're on holiday. We're having a good yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's it's more complex than that. We'll get into that with my story. I'm sure bit. we I'm will. Like, yeah, very nice. Is that your story for us today, Luke? That's my story for us today. Yeah. A little round of applause. Mm, thank you very much. Well done. Take good a bow. job. <laughs> yeah, take a little bow. Take a bow. Stand I, up I and take, take a bow. Okay, I take a bow. An extended Ooh. bow. Oh, you're so welcome. You're oh, so God. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash SciGuys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on old SciGuys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook at SciGuysPod to find out when we're doing more live shows.